So in this lesson, I want to address how you would make sense out of uh, foam issues. Uh, if you don't have enough foam, um, what is the reason why? The golden rule, and this applies to most problems that brewers are going to experience, is to work back. So the first thing to say is, is the CO2 right? Have you got the correct and specified level of CO2 in the beer? Actually, you know, you usually have a range that you, you work to. Air on the side of the top end of the range in terms of uh, CO2 availability. Is it being dispensed correctly? You know, I can remember back in the day uh, in Bass, we had uh, vertical integration. The wonderful days before Thatcher brought in the beer orders. And um, we had total control. We all know our own pubs. And we'd go out there making sure the beer was being looked after and being dispensed correctly and being poured correctly. And on the taps, of course, were these sparklers and you could twist them. Uh, and that would influence the, how much the beer was being squeezed through and the fineness of the bubbles and so on and so forth. And of course, that tends to slow down the rate of uh, dispense. So bartenders didn't like that because there was a line. So they, wanted, so they unscrewed them, took them off and just let the beer sort of trickle in. And so we made them tamper proof so they couldn't unscrew them. So they sawed them off. Um, so it's a real problem. Um, and that's why it's very important that you educate the bar staff and whoever is pouring out beer. Is it being dispensed correctly? Is it being poured on, if it's on tap, through proper setup pumps? If it's being poured from a bottle or a can, is it being poured with the appropriate amount of vigor? Are the glasses clean? Okay, what I say to people at home is never wash beer glasses with food plates. Never do that. Always do your beer glasses first. Uh, hot water, detergent, wash them thoroughly inside and out. Rinse away the detergent. Make sure it's rinsed away and then let them drain dry. Don't dry them on a cloth because there's a risk that there's something greasy on the cloth and your skin may make contact with the glass and that's got grease on it as well. Never carry glasses with your slimy fingers inside uh, the glasses. Is the bitterness within specification, hopefully at the top end of that specification? And if the answer to all of that is, hey, everything's okay, it's the beer's fault, then we have to decide, is it a shortage of foam positives, or are there too many foam negatives, or is it a combination of both? So let me uh, talk you through a couple of approaches to this. Um, and uh, this was work that uh, I originally uh, started in uh, the UK when I was with research manager of Bass, with a colleague called Roy Cope, and more recently John Goldberg um, at uh, UC Davis picked up the baton on this. And the first approach involves what we call ultrafiltration. Um, you can filter beer through membranes, and they will take everything that's big out of the beer. So everything with a molecular weight greater than a thousand, that's, you know, big-ish. But all the proteins and everything like that are going to be removed. And the stuff that comes through has got everything that's got a molecular weight less than a thousand. So that's going to include the bitterness, okay? And, um, and many of the other things as well. And what you do then is to add back protein. And the protein that I like to use is egg white. I've got a patent on putting egg white into beer. Uh, don't recommend it. People are allergic to eggs, so don't do it. Um, um, but this is a model protein solution that you can use in this test. So your ultrafiltration removes the high molecular weight material, and then you can measure the foam stability using the shake test that I've referred to several times in this course. Now let me talk you through one example, which you can see in front of you. So on the y-axis, we have the foam stability by the shaking technique. And then on the x-axis, we have increasing amounts of egg protein, egg albumin, okay? Now let's take a look, first of all, at uh, what I'm calling the control. And the control is the sort of the, the diamond there with the gray dots. So if there's no protein, zero, there's no foam stability. But as you increase the amount of protein, the foam stability goes up. You can see it going up to quite a high level. Now, let's compare that with the permeate. So the control is just a solution of alcohol. 
with a protein added to it. That alcohol concentration is exactly the same level that is in the permeate. Okay? But the permeate contains everything else that's of low molecular weight or small molecules that's in that beer. So again, no albumin, no foam stability, because all the foam proteins have been removed. As you add more and more albumin, you can see this is the triangle there. As you add more and more alb uh, albumin, egg white, you get increased foam stability. But it doesn't go up as much as for the control, just the alcohol. So there's something present in that permeate, in the low molecular weight fraction of the beer, which is foam negative. Okay? So straight away, we can identify that there's something, there's a problem here, there's a foam negative material. Now let's look at the retentate. And the retentate is the black um, squares, and that is the high molecular weight fraction from the beer. So you can see that it has got a finite foam stability, okay? Even if you don't have any albumin. But if you put more albumin into it, the black squares, the foam stability goes up. So yeah, there's protein there, but there's not, a, there's not as much as there could be. So there's, this beer also suffers from not having enough protein. And finally, the impact, that's the actual beer itself. And you can see that its foam stability is not as good as it is in the retentate, probably because you've removed the negatives in the permeate, okay? But as you add more and more protein, then the foam stability increases, and it increases higher than it does in the impact. And again, this is probably because you've taken away the foam negatives. So in this type of approach, you can interpret whether you have a shortage of foam positives Short, uh, presence and excess of foam negatives, or in the present case, both. Now, the second approach that uh, we took um, involves uh, columns that will specifically remove negative materials. And once again, we come back to our old friend, Sephiros. You remember that when I talked about foaming polypeptides, I talked about Sephiros attached to eight carbon units, octile. You can also have sephiros and attach to it a lipid binding protein. It's actually bovine serum albumin, which is albumin from beef blood, basically. And that likes to bind lipids. So if you pour a beer through both columns, um, and if you've got foam negative material in that beer, lipid, it will attach to the column on the right but not the column on the left. And the foam stability will be higher. So if you increase the foam stability by the use of the BSA, the lipid binding protein, that means that there is foam negative material in the beer. Let me illustrate that with some real life examples. So let's take a look at the top. In Pack Beer, it's a pale ale, we got the untreated sample, and again, we're doing the shaking test, so we've got 0.93. The control sephiros, that's the one that's not got any lipid binding protein attached to it. It's gone down to 0.3. It's gone from 0.93 to 0.3. And probably the reason for that is some of the foam positive material is sticking onto the column. But if you then pass it through the column with a lipid binding protein, it goes up to 1.1. So in other words, if you compare the control sephiros with the one with the lipid binding protein, there's a big increase. And that means there's a foam negative material, a lipid, possibly an oxidized fatty acid, which is present in that pale ale. Now the next one, the lager, does not improve by passing through this column. But some of the other ones do. So this is a very handy dandy way, if you've got a laboratory, uh, to um, interpret whether you've got a foam negative problem with your beer.